بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره وشيعته الحمد لله we are able to start a new munajat of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam and that is known as Munajatul Muhibbin the whispered prayers of the lovers those who have love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, here we have just had a prayer of Fajr and I hope that inshallah in such a blessed time inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept all your prayers and worships and good deeds and before I start I would want also to share with you uh, good news that Alhamdulillah in the last few days we had the fifth round of Shia Catholic dialogue as you may know the first three rounds of dialogue took place in the UK in 2003, 2005, 2007 and the fourth took place in Rome in 2011 and the books based on those four rounds of dialogue have all been published including the one which was performed in Rome last year it just came out the first three by uh, was published by a British Catholic publisher the fourth by the liturgical press which is a Christian publisher in the US so now we had a group of 10 uh, Catholic uh, most, uh, uh, of course uh, nine of them were Catholic one was Lutheran and these nine were monks and nuns from different orders but mostly Benedictine orders and the topic for this time was friendship so thanks to God everything went very well uh, we had sessions in which papers were presented and we had group discussions we also had different visits and meetings of different organizations in the seminaries of Cone and yesterday and half day of Monday uh, we took them to Isfahan and last night uh, most of them left so we took them to the airport and I came back uh, from the airport just two hours ago so I hope that this would help in strengthening our mutual trust understanding and friendship and I hope that inshallah the dialogue that we have would be uh, soon showing its result in not only bringing Muslims and Christians together but also to help us to work together as believers in the same God for the betterment of humanity so this was a news that I wanted to share with you now let us start our reflections on this beautiful munajat of Imam Zainul Abedin alayhi salam which in this series of 15 is the ninth of them the munajat starts with a very well-known statement Elahi of course this is uh, after Bismillah Rahman Rahim 
الهي من ذا الذي ضاغ حلاوته محبتك فرام منك بدلا This sentence is um, mentioned in two slides so let us start with the first part of the statement Oh my God who is the one who has ever tasted the sweetness of your love means he was able to experience the beauty of being close to you the beauty of falling in love with you the beauty of being filled with love for you فَرَامَ مِنْكَ بَدَلَ and then he looked for a replacement instead of you there are people who unfortunately don't show interest in religion don't show interest in making connection with God but these are the people who have not had the opportunity to taste to try the beautiful sweet experience of loving Allah otherwise if they had ever had such experience they would never be pleased to replace it with anything else which for sure would not have that beauty that sweetness either would not have any beauty or sweetness or would have had less imagine a person who has tasted the most delicious honey or the most delicious sweet fruit or the most delicious candy would he be pleased to replace it with something bitter or something which has no taste or even something which has some sweetness but very weak or artificial for example just instead of having very beautiful very tasty very mm, nicely smelling honey with some just sugar which has lots of chemical mm, additions into and has been to chemical process is it possible to change it to replace it with that no if someone has for example had a toy imagine if someone has like for example a boy a very young boy who plays with a car so he enjoys that but if he grows and instead of having a toy of car he has a real car and can drive and take that car from one place to another place would he be again interested in having a toy car would he ever say I don't need this real car just give me a toy for sure he would not be happy to do this if someone like a girl who has a doll and plays with that doll becomes mature and would have a real daughter would she ever think of saying I want to replace my daughter with a doll with a girl which is just a toy 
No. So Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, who is the one who has ever had a taste of sweetness of your love, then he has looked for a replacement for you. This is not possible. Woman the lady Anisa Bikur Bika Fabtara Anka Hivada. O Allah, who is the one who has been acquainted with your nearness, who has become familiar with your nearness, who has become intimate with your nearness, and then then have thought removal from you. Is it possible that someone tries and experiences being close, very close, to a very good and powerful king, and then would replace that with becoming close to a normal subject of the king? Would he replace being with uh, the king with being with a servant of the king? Is it possible? Ilahi Fajalna Mimman Stafaitahu Lakurbika Wabila Yatik. So it's impossible to have such experience of sweetness, of love for God and being close to God and then look for something else. Therefore, now we ask Allah to enable us to have that experience. We say, Oh Allah, please place us, include us among the people that you have chosen for your nearness and your friendship. It's very important. This is not something that you can achieve without being chosen. Although we make efforts, of course we have to do something so that we can become lo a lover of God. This doesn't happen by chance. This is based on our own efforts, our own actions. But we have to know that at the end, such things cannot happen without Allah's initiative, uh, love, Allah's active role in offering this to us. Our role is just to respond to the invitation which comes from Allah. It's impossible to be able to love Allah without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping us inviting us so we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that please include us among the people that you have chosen they are honored by being chosen for your nearness and friendship of course I do my best to be one of those people but I know that your choice is also very important like for example, if you want to marry to someone, you have to be virtuous, you have to have some merit, but the other person, the other party also must choose you. It's a mutual selection. So we say to Allah, Please include us among the people that you have chosen for such significant gift of nearness and friendship with you. And you have purified him for your love, for your affection, for your friendship, 
Wood means affection, friendship, and mahabba means love. You know, one quality of real love is that it purifies. A real love for someone, especially if it is for God, would leave no pollution, no dirt in your heart or mind. Because the pollution comes when we are attached to things which are not valuable. If you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you lose your interest in any worldly things. You would be totally taken by the attraction, by the magnetic power of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You would totally forget anything which would be claiming your loyalty and obedience in the place of God. You would not listen to them. You would not pay attention to them. You would not work for them. You would be totally at the service of God. So you become a pure lover of God. This is the power of love. And this is why in Mesbah al-Sharia, Sharia, which is attributed to Imam Sadiq salam, and perhaps it was written by students of Imam, but there are many beautiful ideas of Imam salam inside that book. It says that the love for Allah is like a fire. And this fire burns anything that comes to its reach. What type of burning is this? I don't think it's anything other than this fact that love purifies you. Love totally takes you in control and makes anything which is disliked by your beloved away it removes all of them and you become totally pure and at the service of your beloved so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to choose us and to purify us the third thing is وَشَوَّقْتَهُ إِلَىٰ لِقَائِكَ Include us among those people that you have given them yearning for meeting with you. This shawq, this yearning for laqa'ullah, for the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is something that comes when you have some understanding of the beauty of that meeting. A person who has been already detached from other so do beloved ones and has tasted the sweetness of nearness to Allah, for sure he would have such yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Please include me among the people that you have made pleased with your decision, with your decree. A lover is always pleased with the decisions of his beloved. The only thing that a lover would not be pleased with is disconnection. He never wants to do something that leads to disconnection. He's always worried that something may happen that would make his beloved angry with him and would make his beloved uh, losing interest in him. Otherwise, as far as he is concerned, he's very careful not to do anything bad. So, we, as people who are, insha'Allah, among the lovers of Allah, should have this 
pleasure with Allah's decisions for us and for others. We should be pleased with His decree. وَمَنَحْتَهُ بِالنَّظَرِ إِلَىٰ وَجْهِكَ Please include me or include us among the people that you have granted them gazing upon your face. You have led them to look at you like a very beautiful lady would show herself only to the people who are trusted, who have good intention, and who are not a stranger or namahram to her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make his face, which in some of our previous discussions we have mentioned and explained what is the meaning of Vajhullah. Allah makes this encounter, this experience of gazing upon his face possible for the lovers of Allah. And we want to be among them. وَحَبَوْتَهُ بِرَوَاكِ Please include us among the people that you have shown the favor of your good pleasure. وَأَعَذْتَهُ مِنْ حَجْرِكَ وَقِلَاكِ This is أَعَذْتَهُ It's a dal, not dal. وَأَعَذْتَهُ مِنْ حَجْرِكَ وقلاك. Please include us among the people that you have given them refuge from separation from you and your anger or your wrath. Qila means not liking or being angry with someone. So we want to be granted this refuge, this protection from reaching a point that God leaves you alone. God separates himself from you. God departs your heart. We don't want that. We want to be guaranteed that such thing doesn't happen to us. وَبَوَّأْتَهُ مَقْعَدَ الصِّدْقَ فِي جِوَارِكَ O oh Allah, please include us among the people that you have helped them to settle in a sure sitting place, in an honest and truthful sitting place in your neighborhood. So they are very close to you as your neighbor and they have settling point in that neighborhood which is with set honesty, truthfulness. We don't want to just show and pretend that we are a lover of Allah. We want to be honestly, genuinely included among the lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَصَصْتَهُ بِمَعْرِفَتِكَ And you have chosen them, singled them out for true knowledge of you. وَأَهَّلْتَهُ لِعِبَادَتِكَ They have your knowledge and you have made them qualified. Ahaltahu. You have made them qualified. You have made them worthy for worshipping you. It's not that everyone is qualified for worshipping Allah. Worshipping Allah, which is something very natural, something very easy to understand if you have your God-given nature and fitrah, still needs 
to be gifted with some qualities, some good qualities. And there are people who unfortunately, by doing bad things, by keeping practicing bad unlike uh, bad and disliked actions they lose that qualification i want to be one of those who have been made qualified and worthy for your worship one of those people whose heart you have captivated with your will you have attracted fully and preoccupied their mind, their heart with yearning for you, with having will for reaching you. One of those people that you have picked for seeing you, witnessing you. Mushahada means to see, to have a view, a vision of something. You have made empty for you their look. Means they are totally preoccupied with you. They are totally absorbed, attracted by your love. So their face is only directed towards your face, face to face encounter with God. You have made their heart, the breast, empty from anything other than your love. There is nothing in their heart other than you they are totally free from anything other than you whom you have made desirous willing of what is with you oh they have interest in what you have got they know you have very significant qualities and you have very significant gifts to give. So therefore, they are only thinking of getting access to your beautiful qualities and beautiful gifts. Those that you have inspired with your remembrance, they not know when and how to remember you. shukraka, And you have allotted thanksgiving to you. They have the honor of being helped to be grateful to you. Which is one of the keys of the success that we discussed before. And you know, we had a paper in key spiritual terms. One of them was love. One of them was humbleness. And the other one was gratefulness and you have made him busy with your obedience you have occupied them with obeying you and you have made them turn them into one of your righteous creatures righteous people and you have chosen them for whispering to you. Something that we said before, but now we say it in a very um, clear and explicit way. And as a matter of emphasis, we do this. You have detached them from anything that wants to detach them from you. You have disconnected them from anything that wants to disconnect them from you. Any 
thief that wants to rob their heart has been put away from them. Let me stop here because it's beginning of another line of requests and I hope that inshallah not only we would understand and have knowledge of greatness of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also would have the experience of that love and then sharing it inshallah with others if you have any question please put it forward yes we have the first question assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah first of all I, uh, we want to thank you for the interface dialogue you and your team had for you have represented all of us thank you very much yes indeed whatever we do whatever little thing that we do is on behalf of all of you we are one family we are one community and whatever anyone does for this community is doing that on behalf of all and therefore we are in need of your prayer your support and inshallah day by day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds to our understanding of this unity and day by day Allah enables us to represent this community inshallah in better way and in most productive way inshallah the question is please explain the term istifat jazakallah yes istafa yastafi istifa means to choose you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in allah astafa adam allah chose the prophet adam allah chose the prophet ibrahim prophet noah and in particular we know that one of the titles of our prophet is mustafa it means the chosen one there are billions of people and all of them have capacity and potential for being close to Allah to be vice president of God on the earth but it's not that everyone achieves that there are people who equip themselves with good qualities and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore picks them up and Allah selects them these are the selected ones so they are not selected because they have different nature they are not selected because they come from another planet they are selected because they have appreciated the greatness of human creation the greatness of the potentials and talents that Allah has given them made use of them and therefore they are worthy of being receiving more and higher blessings of Allah and then being able to speak on his behalf to act on his behalf to be his vicegerent to represent him question two salam looks like only imams and very pious people fit to fit into description of this dua when we are reading these dua we feel the closeness to Allah but once we enter into the reality of this world a lot of things pollute my soul and I feel I lost that wonderful feeling and it gets replaced by sadness and farness from people Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah of course those who perfectly fit into this description are the imams and pious people as you said but there is no reason why we cannot have at least some of these qualities or some degrees of these experiences yes they are perfect examples but I think every person young and old man or woman can achieve this 
this is not something uh, which is not accessible, achievable for us. This is indeed something very natural, something that every human being can achieve, provided that he or she has not done something to disqualify himself or herself. If you, for example, imagine a school in which you are training people, nearly all people can become good students, can graduate a good school, would not make it very difficult for people to graduate. A good school make everything possible and easy for people to learn and graduate. But there may be few people who would not graduate, who would not finish and complete the course, not because the course was designed in a bad way or in a very difficult way, no, because they didn't make any efforts, they didn't appreciate what was offered. So we can be ambitious of reaching that point, and as you rightly said, there are times, like when we read these du'as, that we feel this closeness to Allah. We should try to let this continue, that this become an established quality of us. Our engagement in worldly life, in daily life, would perhaps make us forget or being diverted from away from these things but we should always go back as soon as you remember go back if you forget it can be forgiven but if you forget you have to go back as soon as you remember you try not to forget, you try to remember all the time, but it happens that you may forget. But try to remember and go back to the right track as soon as you can. Try to be in the company of the people who have this understanding. If you forget, they remind you. And if you remember, they will help you. As we have in Hadith about good friends. In Nasiya Lakara. If he forgets, his friend, his companion reminds him, and if he is already remembering, he would help him to do it more. So this is quite possible, and inshallah, with our efforts and with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would be able to be among such people. It seems that uh, we have no further questions. Our time is also over. I thank you for your attention. And I hope that inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us ability to say what Imam Zainul Abidin has said in these 15 whispered prayers with our heart, not just with our tongue. To be really saying these things after experiencing them, inshallah. May Allah be your help and your support and your protector. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of us. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen.